Hi, dreamers, and welcome to Dreamers Unite, the talk show for dreamers. On this show, we talk about dream creation, we manifest, we affirm our dreams, and we give you some really helpful advice on practical steps that you can take to make your dreams come true. Today, I am super excited to have Robert Cool Bell on our show. He is one of the founding members of the legendary group Cool in the Gang, seven time Grammy Award winners, American Music Award, multi platinum selling, and the most sampled band of all time. Cool in the Gang has sold over 80 million albums worldwide and influenced the music of many generations and is now celebrating 50 years in the business. That's extraordinary. He is showing absolutely no signs of slowing down, and I am thrilled and honored to have Mr. Robert Cool Bell as my guest today. So welcome to Dreamers Unite again. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. And I want to note, too, that you've been traveling and you came from directly off the plane to here. So I'm excited about that. So why um, Cool in the Gang? How did you, where did that seed, that dream come from, and even the name? Well, it started back uh, in Youngstown, Ohio. My brother and I and my family, uh, we left Youngstown, Ohio in 1960. And uh, we came to Jersey City and all that. Now, Papa was a little Rolling Stone, so my mother was kind of like, you know, her sister came out and she said, listen, you guys living like this? You need to come on and live with us in New York and New Jersey. So everything that we own just about was in the back of a Bel Air, her car, her family car. And we went to the, the Jersey City and Long Island. And uh, that's where I met uh, members of the street, sort of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a country boy coming to Jersey, surrounded by New York and Newark, you know, and uh, so my mother sent me out to get a, a loaf of bread. At that time, it was called Lucy Bread, cost a quarter. Wow. Uh, so I go out and get this bread. Two guys come up to me and say, said to me, uh, uh, give me your money. I said, what? I got the quarter, man. You <laughs> should get your loaf of bread. Anyway, they took, they took the quarter. So I went back, my mother said, well, why do you let that happen? I said, well, I don't know these folks. Anyway, I ended up, uh, uh, happened to be with them in order to not be the victim. Okay, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, at that time, um, uh, I called myself uh, Tamango because I saw this movie about Tamango, and uh, he was uh, uh, rebellious and I said I like that guy. So I became Tamango, but also became a part of this group. So it went from those two guys to about forty of us. They were we called, 40 of you? Yeah, we called ourselves the Imperial Lords at the time. And so, as things started to move and develop, uh, my brother was saying, man, you gotta come on, you know, you gotta stop hanging out out there, man. Come on. And so, I, I got around that. I got around that. But it was protective for him, too. Mm -hmm. Nobody really messed with him because, you know, <laughs> we had quite a crew there. Okay. Then uh, I changed the name to Cool because uh, there was a, a, a guy calling himself Cool. They spelled it with a C. And things were starting to get a little better. So I said, yeah, I can be cool. I start with a K. And not knowing that one day, that's going to be cool. Right? So that was the beginning of how I got my name, Cool. But before that, we were the Jazzy Axe, Soul Town Band, Cool and the Flames. Now, we had to change that because of James Brown. Okay. So it was James Brown and the Famous Flames. Wow. And we didn't want to have any problems with the God Party. So, well, yeah, you don't want to call So, we said, well, why don't we just change Flame to Gang? He said, okay. The sound that we were developing was sort of like jazz from, uh, from the Soul Town Review. We were with the Soul Town Review. Okay. And the Soul Town Review in Jersey City, we had to back up about 15 groups for the show. And they would Did you be, say per show? Yeah. Okay. Well, they would be singing uh, Motown hits. That's why they called them the Soul Town Review, mm -hmm. Motown Review. 
Mm-hmm. And we became the soul town uh, before school was playing. So the music that we were doing, playing all the Motown hits and then Sly and James Brown, we were developing a sound which later became the Cool and Game sound after we changed the name from Cool and the Flames to Cool and the Game. Very first rec- record came out July 3rd, 1969. So in another week or so, July 3rd, uh, 2019, will be 50 years in the business. That's, That's extraordinary. Good. Congratulations. That really is. You have so many hits. I mean, we all in the studio, we've been singing them. We're all, you know, huge fans. Mm-hmm. What would you say is one of your favorites? I know that's probably a hard one, but do you have a favorite? Well, as you know, the most popular one is uh, Go Court Celebration. Uh, yes, yes. My favorite, I would say, some of that is uh, Hollywood Swinger. Yes. Hollywood Swinger. You know, when Frankie Crocker broke that record in New York back in the day. Wow. And then Lady Night, because my wife and I used to hang out. New York Studio 54, the jeans. And uh, he said, you know, every Friday night was a ladies' night. Friday, Saturday night. And that's what the inspiration was. That's where it came. That's when JT Taylor joined the band because we didn't really have a singer at the time. And that was the very first record that we did with him. It was called Ladies' Night. Frankie Crocker broke that one too. Amazing. Where did your inspiration come from for music? Where did your love of music come from and your gift? Well, music was around the house when we were younger. My father was a boxer, uh, top five, uh, featherweight, lightweight. And uh, he would box in Cuba and uh, before the sanctions and like people like Miles Davis, uh, oh. Gillespie, all, they, they, just, they all like go to Cuba. Just like everybody used to hang around Mike Tyson and the rapper. Yes. The same thing was going on back then, you know? So uh, that's, uh, that's where it was started because it was there. Matter of fact, he named me after a famous bass player, and he didn't know I was going to be a bass player. Well, I always believe in what you speak. That's part of the things that we say here on Dreamers Unite. You know, there's power. First of all, there's power in naming your children, um, mm-hmm. and there's power in words. Right. And so, even though you know there was, you didn't know, but here you are, this legendary bass player with a legendary sound. It was really, you know, by divine design, right? Yeah, the name is a little strange though, but it was Dolo Monteloso Eurico. It was a bass player, Cuban bass player. And they said, well, my mother said, well, who would call him all of that? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they stop short at Dolo, I'd be pissed off, I'd piss me off. So, give, take Dolo Monteloso, it's not noise to say Dolo. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't want just Dolo. No, we definitely don't, no, we don't want that for sure. Well, yeah, that, that's how it happened, you know. Well, you're probably at that point, you're like, I'll take cool. <laughs> uh, that's why I became cool when I got, finally got to Jersey City. You told us a little bit about your journey being raised in this area. Um, how do you think things have kind of changed and evolved um, in the music business um, mm-hmm. for you? I mean, clearly you've been relevant for 50 years. That's the whole nother topic we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. But how do you think the music industry with you coming into Jersey City, like you said, a country guy, you know, coming here. Mm-hmm. How's mm-hmm. how have things changed? We were young at the time and uh, once we uh, did our first record, Cool and the Gang, um, we started developing songs because like I said, we didn't have a lead singer and we would do songs like a couple like Since I Lost My Baby by The Temptations or originals like Breeze and Soul, Funky Man, Raw Hamburger, Funky Stuff. And people said, well, What's a raw hamburger? I said, you don't know. We didn't have a name for the song, so we called it raw hamburgers. And what's chocolate buttermilk? You know, came up with another name. We called it chocolate buttermilk. But these songs became popular songs. People were asking, you know, uh, play chocolate buttermilk. I said, you know, I don't know if we remember how that goes. That's been so long. You know, but then it started to develop the sound. And then when we did funky stuff, Jungle Boogie mm. and Hollywood Swing. Mm. That was the turnaround. Now, the story with that, the record company came to us and said, hey, you know, uh, you guys been having territorial hits. And we got this producer who had just this Mongo the Mongo song, So Makusa, and we want him to work with you. He said, well, why are we going to do that? He said, okay, we'll, 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 we'll meet with the guy. And it didn't work out. So we went uh, to a studio called Baggage 
in New York. We went in there around 8 o'clock in the morning, and we just started grooving. By 12 mm -hmm. o'clock, we had created Hollywood Swinging, Jungle Boogie, and Funky South. So needless to say, the record company did not produce it. I guess not. So in a period of basically Pressure. eight hours, yeah. you created three songs? Yeah. That is raw yeah. talent. That is raw yeah. talent. Eight hours, dreamers, eight hours. So you don't have to worry sometimes about time. The nuggets I collect from you, I try to throw it out and share it to our guests. And sometimes people think, oh, you know, I don't have time to create or, um, you know, I can't create, mm -hmm. you know, in, in two hours, anything, you know, I need, you know, two months. But, you know, when you have the raw drive, the talent, the desire, again, you're just proof, right? Well, Anything is possible. Too. Okay, and some pressure too. Yeah. Okay, we won't forget that, the that little bit of pressure. Yeah. Putting the pressure on us. Yeah. I mean, because we always, I mean, all those other songs we did before that time. Right. Like I said, you know, Funky Man, Funky Granny, you know, uh, See a Tranquility and all that. But when the record company, you know, the song later about that, get your back up off the wall. Yeah. Have to get that on. Oh, when they put right. us against the wall. They had later. you up against the wall. And that's what happened. We, you know, we were able to turn it around and part of the 50 year journey. Wow. So now, when did you really, when we talk about these turning points, I mean, multi platinum selling, 80 million albums worldwide, and still in the business for 50 years now. But at what point then? Did you feel like I've made it? You know, I I I I I feel successful. You know, I I met a goal. At what point did you feel like that? Well, there were two time periods. Uh, first one was uh, when we did Hollywood Swing and Jungle Boogie, <clears throat> Funky Stuff, Summer Madness, Open Sesame. You know, uh, Summer Madness was in the Rocky movie. Open Sesame was in the movie uh, yes. uh, with uh, 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 John Travolta and yes. Hugh Grease. You know. We're out on tour, and a gentleman by the name of Dick Griffey sold our records. We're out with the Jacksons. And he was saying, hey, you know, you guys doing doing a good job on the tour. He said, but uh, you know what? He said, what? I think you need a lead singer. We said, you do? He said, yeah. Yeah, I think you need a lead singer. So we thought about it at that time. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire had, met, had Maurice White, Philip Bailey. Mm. Uh, Commodores had Lionel Richie, all right. So, uh, and our music with different styles, you can sing to it as well. I think it came back when we were backing up all these kids. So we uh, met JT Taylor. We didn't we didn't audition a whole lot of people. It was uh, he was working at the same studio uh, over in West Orange, the House of Music. And uh, my brother, you know, said play some. Chord changes for him. Sing that, sing that, sing that. He said, you sound like a young Nat King Cole. So I do. <laughs> anyway, With a smooth sound. that's what happened. That's when we started there. When we did Ladies Night, we were, we were at the American Music Award, and we had won two awards for Ladies Night that night. Yeah. And my brother came up with this idea. He said, uh, uh, I was reading a scripture in the Bible about celebration, you know, when. Uh, God created man as part of the celebration. He said, I was inspired to write this song, Celebration, along with the fact that we were celebrating the fact that we came back to the business of Ladies' Night. So after that, Celebration, Too Hot, Fresh, and goes on, the 80s became cool in the game. Yes. That's when we felt that we had made it. Although we have, we have a fan base in the 70s too, we call them gang heads. Gang heads. Oh, they, they said, I don't want to hear no Joe. And I play funky stuff. Yeah. I don't want to hear uh, fresh, you know, play uh, 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 Jungle Boogie, Hollywood Swinger. Then they call us songs that we haven't heard in years. Like, I remember John Coltrane or Breeze and Soul, you know. Oh, my goodness. So, Mr. Bell, I could talk to you forever. Your story, I mean, just all of it is so inspiring. And I guess the key is never give up. You know, stay strong. Because it seems like every 10 years, they were trying to write us off. You go from the 60s to the 70s, no, from the 70s to the 80s. At that time, uh, they said well, disco was dead. They were burning mm -hmm. records in Chicago. Mm -hmm. The whole business was changing. And uh, uh, my brother told me, he came, a little uh, girl came up to him and said, uh, Go again. 
You're an old school. You young still playing? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, when they we had been counting out then. I mean, then of course with you know ladies' night JT, we went on another ten years. Right. JT leaves the band for obvious reasons. But, Things that he wanted to do on his own. Mm -hmm. I had no problem with that. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, What y'all gonna do now? <laughs> Ten years after that, we kept going. We started developing our career around the world. We, we, we were some of the first bands to go to Russia, to go into Poland, to go into Romania, Czechoslovakia. We just started, Africa, we just started we paved the, the way. We just started moving we around the, the way. There yeah. were so many other artists around the world. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, you also are expanding to um, into business ventures. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about Cool Enterprises, your champagne. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Well, the champagne is called uh, Le Cool uh, Champagne. Uh, I came up with that name because I wanted to have sort of like a, a French. It seems like things that come from that way, where uh, it's accepted, you know. What's Le Cool Champagne? It's sort of just cool champagne. <laughs> but, I don't know. Here we probably accept it. We, yeah. you know, well, yeah. you got Don Pelion, Castel, yeah. you know, uh, Maurice Champagne. You know, they like them exotic names, I guess. So that's when uh, I decided to do that. I met some people there, and we went up into Champagne Country, uh, Rams, and we met with the the Bertolo family, and they liked what we were doing. Plus, you know, we have a strong fan base. Mm -hmm. fans too, mm -hmm. so. That'll help. And uh, we're finally launching, actually, yesterday, 21st. Congratulations. We on the web, website, yeah. They have uh, the, the cool champagne. That's so, exciting. We well, got, congratulations. Yeah, we got to say that uh, it's going to be a hot, cool summer. Okay, I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to claim it and affirm it with <laughs> Mr. Robert Cool Bell. It's going to be a hot, cool summer. Did I get it right? Yeah, but make sure you have an ice cold glass of a cool champagne. Oh, it for that hot cool summer. summer. There you go. Yeah, make sure for that hot cool <laughs> summer. You're working with your son too, so yeah. you've created such a legacy. Um, he's a DJ. He's gone on tour with you. Mm -hmm. Royalty. Mm -hmm. I love the song too. Yes. Um, how has that impacted your relationship with your son? And what do you want to instill in him from the journey that you've had? Well, both of them used to travel with me back uh, in the 70s and we'll go on tour. When they were in school, they got out for the summer on the tour bus with us. They would argue and fight over the drums. Uh, even my little son sitting over there, Lieutenant uh, Lloyd, he was part of the family over there too. And uh, uh, um, so they, um, Wanted to get into the business. My older son, Muhammad, he got involved with the main Dupree um, mm -hmm. on the producer side. Hakeem also with the main Dupree on the producer That's side. Great. But he was with a group called POV. About after uh, a giant records, that was his first uh, music endeavor was with the group POV. And now he's a DJ and uh, he wrote a song about his mother who. Uh, we just lost. I'm so sorry. Ago. I'm very sorry. Called Lawson. And uh, plus, he went out on the road with us. We did 48 shows of Van Halen. They fell in love with him out there. We did 10 shows of Kid Rock. I call him, he, you know, he really learned to get it. He works for me. You'd be surprised who I came right now and uh, how he asked the various questions. Who's this young guy? He said he's the CEO, you know. He know how to work the room. <laughs> and I'm sure he works it like his father knows how to work the room. Yeah. I'm always curious to know, like, where does that seed, where does the spark, the mm -hmm. dream come from as we explore? Um, did you know when you were a kid, like, I want to be a musician? Did you ever see? Because some, some people say, you know, I knew from right on I could see myself, whatever, acting, singing, dancing. They knew. Did you know? Did you have any idea that you were going to create this legendary music sound and you're, you were going to be so iconic? Well, we didn't know that we were going to be where we are today mm -hmm. in terms of that because it's uh, up and down business. Mm -hmm. You know, you're up, you're up, you're down, you're down, you got to figure out, we're going to get back up there again. 
you know. But um, I think that our parents are always told us whatever you do, stick together, stay together as a family. Because we start off with seven, three of the guys passed already, we have four. So, I mean, we have problems like everybody else. Yes. But we have to work it out. And know? how do you, oh, what, what do you do? So I can share with our viewers and I can also gather because I think I mentioned to you, I'm on this journey of creating and have created a new television series and we're, you know, getting in place to start mm -hmm. pitching it. Mm -hmm. And it's huge. And as I'm climbing this mountain, you know, you feel like it's a mountain sometimes, but it's also an enjoyable mountain to climb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What can I take away so I can keep it with me? And I've already taken away so many things that you've said, but I'd love to share that just one piece of advice that, or knowledge, wisdom, that um, you can that you can share with us to say during those toughest times, because like you said, the journey isn't easy. Mm -hmm. um, we know you didn't last 50 years and it's all been, you know, sunshine. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always uh, a challenge. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I accept the battle in terms of the challenge from a little kid. Uh, you know, I sat in Ohio, I didn't want to be in the street, but it was a challenge. You know, so uh, each time uh, a challenge comes, you have to face it and, and don't give up and keep pushing, pushing forward, you know, because they say only a strong survive. And then uh, God, so all the blessings come from the Creator. You have to uh, believe in, 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 in the Creator that it can happen for you, even when you're feeling down and out. Mm -hmm. You gotta reach up, you know. We those songs like High Plains. We've been down too long, been down too strong. We have to keep on reaching, reaching on up to High Plains with love and understanding. Amen. So we have to really think about that, you know, and not, you know, not give up. You know, can't be a loser. Gotta be a winner. Ah, uh, don't give up. Believe, and even if it's not God that you believe in, I certainly believe in God and Mr. Bell does too. Even if it's not that, believe in something greater than yourself and be a winner, be a winner. Thank you so much for that advice. I am carrying it with me and I've certainly thrown it out to the viewers. Catch it, catch it. We're going to play Name It, Claim It, Own It. And you have written down your dream. Mm -hmm. So Name It, Claim It, Own It is really about naming your dream because you can't make anything happen if you don't set intention and part of setting the intention right is thought mm -hmm. and then putting it into something that's concrete mm -hmm. right and so that's what you did mm -hmm. i didn't read the dream so mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you want to share it or not well, you don't yeah. have to <laughs> uh, my dream is to see a unified world and that would be a celebration Okay, that just took me a little out of body, I want to say. That's a beautiful dream. And I'm going to put this into our dream box. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us, you know, want to see a unified world. And you've helped to unify the world through your music. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you being here. I think our whole studio, we're all in awe. We're just mm -hmm. amazing fans. And I appreciate you, and I thank you so much. Well, thank you. I have to add one more thing. My yes. wife, before she passed, um, she started a company called Dream Stars. We did an event in Florida where we had five different groups that was wanting to be successful in these businesses. Her vision and the Cool Kids Foundation. And cool that's Kids that's Foundation. That's what kept me going. Keeps me pushing. Dream Stars. Dream cool Stars. Kids Foundation. Dream Stars, Cool Kids Foundation. If you want it, are you, donations, where can the people go? Where can people follow that? Right now, uh, uh, Cool Kids Foundation or through Just School Enterprises, you know, we're uh, pushing. We had this plan before she passed, so, so I'm pushing heavy into 2020. Beautiful. And what's the overall vision? Well, she, her vision was to see uh, uh, music in school. Uh, kids in school, getting a good uh, academic, not playing hookers in school. Yes. <laughs> doing the right thing. I'm just growing in this world. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're going to have to, you know, we'll go out and leave that with. I think we're going to have to have you put that dream down too and add it to our dream box. I cannot thank you enough. I am honored. Sincerely so. It's been a pleasure just to sit mm -hmm. and receive your wisdom. And uh, I've, I definitely have gotten 
I've been inspired. I'm already inspired by your music, but sitting with you, it's brought me to a whole new level. Okay, so thank you. thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Okay. I appreciate it. We will see you next time on Dreamers Unite. Thank you. Hi, this is Cool of Cool and the Gang. I'm here at my house here in Old Town, and things are very tough out there with the coronavirus. Um, you know, uh, all the uh, musicians out there that's, that's not working anymore, including myself, and all the cancellations. But more than that, you know, um, the uh, military, the military staff, fighter fighters, police, the Congress, employees that work for restaurants, people that's in general, that, that's all out of work. And that, that's a tough thing. I want you guys out there to Stay strong, stay strong, because we're going to get over this uh, virus, this coronavirus, you know. We had a song called Love and Understanding. People all over the world, it's time for love and understanding. This is the time to pull together. This is the time to cherish the love. This is the time to celebrate life. We're going to get through this. And I'm going to be happy to see all my friends and fans out there when we get back on the road, when we tour again, once this corona, when I was in the road.